Thaksin Shinawat returns home. Thailand's former leader back from exile was immediately detained. He supports the new government, which is backed by the military that ousted him. The winners of the election are out in the cold. So what next for Thailand? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. Thailand's democracy enters another phase, just as a towering political figure from its past returns from exile. Thaksin Shinawat was whisked from the airport to prison to start serving an eight-year sentence. But there's strong speculation that he and his Pueh Thai party have an arrangement with the powerful military for his return and for the formation of a new government. Meanwhile, the Move Forward party, which won May's election, is sidelined. Thailand's democracy has been fragile, with governments overthrown by the generals who remain in overall control. We'll be picking through what all this means for Thailand in a moment with our guests. But first, here's Tony Cheng in Bangkok with more on what people think of the latest political manoeuvres. It's been a dramatic 24 hours in Thailand. Thaksin Shinawat, the former prime minister who'd been in self-imposed exile for 15 years, but arguably the most influential figure in Thai politics for more than two decades, returned. He was met at the airport by huge crowds, but then whisked away by the police to the Supreme Court and then on to jail to start an eight-year term. But then, in the middle of the night, taken to hospital with medical complications. And while all of that was going on, Thailand got a new prime minister after four months of political deadlock. Shreta Tawi Sin representing the Per Thai political party, who came second in the general election. He'll now form a coalition government, but in order to do that, he's going to have to join with three parties allied to the military, part of the last administration. And the big picture is that Thai voters voted overwhelmingly for reform and for change. Move forward, the party that won the election has been shoved out of the side, and Per Thai in this coalition government is going to find it very hard to create any real reform. How much are the frustrations of those voters going to spill out onto the streets as they have in the past? And will Taxon, who's been such a divisive figure in the past, prove to be a peacemaker or a troublemaker? Tony Chang for Inside Story, Bangkok. Well, joining us now are our guests in Bangkok, Panchada Siriwanabud, a specialist on Thailand's electoral system and an associate professor at Mahadol University. In Singapore is Duncan Macargo, professor of public policy and global affairs at Nanyang Technological University. He's the co-author of The Taxonization of Thailand. And also in Bangkok is Kasset Piromia, a former, Thai, a former foreign minister of Thailand. He's a Democratic Party politician and a former Yellow Shirts activist. A very warm welcome to all of you. Cassette, let's start with you. It's no coincidence, is it, that Thai Taksin has returned home on the same day that his party's nominee for prime minister won the vote in parliament. Was there a deal between Pue Thai and the military, which, as well you know, are two traditional enemies? As a result of the national elections on the 14th of May, the move forward unexpectedly and beyond expectation and so on had won 14 million votes, unprecedented, unexpected. And it, uh, the party had defeated every other political party, especially the established political party like the Per Thai, under the leadership of the former Prime Minister Thaksin, as well as the established parties backed by a couple of generals who staged the coup d'etat in 2014. And the move forward has uh, been coming out with a policy campaign and platform to bring about drastic changes and transformation of the Kingdom of Thailand to become more democratic. 
Cassip Romeo, excuse me, I'm Frank just going to jump in there because we, we do know all of this from the outcome of the election. But what we want to know is how Taksin managed to come back home on the same day that his party, the Puer Thai Party, was able to put in power their nominee for prime minister by forming a coalition with two pro-military parties. The military, of course, having ousted him some over 10 years ago before, 20 years ago before. I think there has there, there have been a lot of behind the scene negotiation between Thaksin and the military establishment and the conservative elements in Thailand. But that's really interesting, before, isn't it? Because yeah. these two, the military and Pue Thai, are traditional enemies within the Thai political sphere. But now they have a, a more more what you call dangerous common enemy mm. in the name of the forward party that wanted to bring about changes and Thaksin or the military generals and so on they are conservative they don't want to see change they want to see the status quo so in that sense the circumstances have forced them to come together as part of the bigger establishment and to oppose to deter any changes that would make Thailand the kingdom a more democratic one more open more participatory so, Panchada, this is a real sea change for Thailand, isn't it? The, the Pue Thai and the military joining forces, at least to secure the return of Thaksin and to stay in power. Does this mean that Pue Thai has become part of the establishment? Well, yes, this is, uh, this is really clear that uh, Pue Thai have joined the pro-military political parties and, you know, they leave... Um, move forward behind to be an opposition party. This is not a good thing for Pe Thai itself because, you know, in the next election, uh, Pe Thai will face a lot of problems in the election campaigns and also election results because most of the Pe Thai supporters, you know, they want Pe Thai to be a, a leader and the prime minister and form the government together with the move forward. This is a form of democratic side. So they are, I think they are disappointing that Pe Thai party now switching to form with the pro-military government. So then that's why, as you mentioned earlier, there's a deal between the uh, Thai party and the two military parties. They try to form together in order to bring taxing back. And at the same time, the two military political parties continue to maintain their power in the coalition government. And then they continue to rule the rule country of Tha uh, rule Thailand once again. Duncan, we've been here before, haven't we, in Thailand? The losing party getting to rule, the winning party sidelined, except normally, the losing party, or in every election since 2001, the losing party has been Pue Thai. Yeah, I wish I could say that Thailand is usually well known for honouring election results in a thoroughly democratic manner. But what we've often found in the past is that the election result is one thing and the outcome is quite another. For example, in the last election in 2019, things didn't turn out exactly as planned. The pro-military side didn't get the kind of edge that they wanted in the parliament. And Lo and behold, the election commission disappeared behind closed doors, recalculated the method of allocating party list seats, gave out a few seats to some small micro parties that no one expected to be in the parliament. And then lo and behold, the pro-military conservative side was able to form uh, a coalition and run the country for the next four years. So not so many people were aware of that kind of behind the scenes maneuver, but this time, with the extremely obvious machinations of the Senate to block Pita, the move forward leader, from becoming prime minister, it's just really rather too crude for a lot of people's taste. But they're confronted with the reality that their votes are not necessarily the determining factor in who's actually going to form the government. And that, of course, it's true that there's a common enemy and move forward became a very clear common enemy when this extremely strong showing appeared. But Many people believe, and we started hearing as, as early as February or before, that there was already an understanding between Taksin, specifically himself, and the leaders of those pro-military parties. And with Taksin, it's not just about Perta. It's really about him and his own overwhelming desire to return to Thailand for his own purposes. And he's quite ready to sacrifice the electoral, the future electoral interests of his party uh, for his own personal gain. OK, Kasip Piromia, what do you think Taksin's own purposes are? Why has he come back now? Well, I think he's getting old. He's 74 years old. He wanted to come back, and now there is an opening 
because he was able to reach out to the military establishment and make a deal. So he, was, he succeeded in making the deal for himself. And he could, I think, uh, was uh, eager enough to discard the mass support and so on. But for why? His own to, coming what, back. to what end did he make this deal to come back? Well, I think it's a personal wish and so on. And second is that he thinks that once his party is in the government, they can recoup the situation through populist policy measures and so on. So it's a risk-taking with the hope that they could recover later and overcome, the, I think, the formidable uh, challenges forthcoming from the move forward. Panjada, do you think we're going to see Taksin behind bars for any length of time? He's, he's supposed to be serving eight years. I think he only served a couple of hours before he was whisked out and put into hospital, which uh, our correspondent noted was rather strange, given he looked perfectly healthy when he arrived at the airport just a few hours earlier. Do you think part of this deal is that he is going to walk free? Well, yes, um, you know, this is not, this taxing is not the first Thai person that, you know, a big person that be in jail and, you know, doing this kind of story, you know, and then um, moving from jail to hospital and then it just disappeared. This is not the first time. But um, Taksin, uh, when he come back this time, I think, you know, he still play a role in politics and he's going to work on the politics behind the scene, even though he, you know, appoint his own people and, you know, um, uh, per Thai become the government, but as uh, all of his family and he himself said that he, he he doesn't want to be involved in politics anymore. But you can see on how they formed the coalition government and how he tried to put his daughter to mm. become the nom uh, to become the uh, per Thai nomination as a prime minister. All this kind of thing, you know, as a professor Duncan say, it's always about himself. It's not about political party. It's not about Per Thai, and it's not about the Thai people. So then, that's why you know this is gonna make Per Thai and also uh, the this coalition government to be a hard time to rule the country, and and especially in the next election, Per Thai will face a lot of trouble in order, you know, to win to win the election uh, in the next election as well. Some even say that they have a high potential that Per Thai will fail apart because, you know, uh, they cannot really get any vote or support from their supporter anymore, except the real red shirt that they might support Per Thai and Taksin in the following elections. So I think this kind of move of Taksin and the Per Thai party will make the party itself and Taksin and his family have a hard time to survive in the Thai politics, especially to win the next election. Duncan, do you agree with that? Because we know that Puerto Thai lost a lot of its votes to the Move Forward party, but now it is in government and it's got the support of the military behind it. That's a pretty powerful force, as we've seen in Thai politics. Do you think we're going to be seeing Puerto Thai serving out the whole term? That is very unclear because we could be entering a period of instability. There are all kinds of things likely to happen over the next couple of years. For example, the change in the current rule that allows the Senate to have a kind of veto through the parliamentary vote on who gets to be prime minister, and that expires in May of next year. So the possibility for some reorganization of the ruling coalition is very much there. It's not clear whether this government is really likely to be able to go to term. I mean, one of the big questions with a party like Purtai is why do people vote for it? And, you know, as in other countries, people vote for parties for a variety of reasons. They don't only vote for parties because they support their policies and they think that they're behaving sensibly and, and doing the right thing for the country. So Purtai does have very strong local power networks uh, with their MPs who can deliver votes on the ground to some extent, irrespective of the performance of the party. So Per Thai may be able to continue mobilizing some votes in their traditional heartlands in the north and northeast. But what we saw in this last election was an incredible erosion of those old modes of doing politics. So what's really interesting now, and it's scaring not just Per Thai, but all of the other sort of traditional parties as well, is has the electoral gain changed? Is it much less about local power networks and influence and, and use of influence and money? And how much more is it about bigger ideas and questions and ways that the party presents itself ideologically? Because their party is in trouble. It's being hammered by Move Forward mm. and could be hammered by other parties that take up the mantle of a more progressive ground in the future.
And as we saw in the last election, the Thai people have spoken. They are after a more progressive form of politics. The only thing that's stopping them, uh, Kasit Piromia, is the military. When its power and its grip in power, as Duncan said, in May next year, it will lose its grip on the Senate. Do you think it's taken a gamble by getting into bed with Puer Thai? Because Puer Thai, as we know, is the traditional enemy of the military. And will it be seeking to change the constitution to try and lessen the military's power? Well, I think uh, I don't have the, the, the retired generals who, who I think, uh, control two political parties. They are no longer active military personnel. And I don't think that they still retain much influence inside the military establishment. So in that sense, they have to cling on to the political arena. And by, I think, associating themselves with the Pur Thai, with Thaksin and so on, it also uh, prolongs their political life and influence in the affairs of the, of the kingdom. As to the military establishment itself, at the moment, they can sit tight because of the fact that the move forward wishes to reform drastically the military establishment now will no longer take place because I suspect that there is already the understanding and the agreement between the military establishment and the Thaksin and the Pur Thai not to touch the reform question of the military as a whole. So there's a give and take and so on going on. But let me go back one thing about Kun Thaksin. He is also waiting for the amnesty to be submitted to His Majesty the King. So he's waiting for the pardon also. So in that sense, the eight years term, a jail term, will not be, will become valid for him. So he hopes on that one. And there might be some sort of a tacit understanding that a petition would be submitted to His Majesty the King to be for Thaksin to be given the amnesty, uh, the, the pardon, and so on. And having known Thaksin for a few years, a long time back, I don't think that he will give up any ambition about running the country. He will not give up politics. And once he becomes a free man, he will, I think, renew his ambition to lead Thailand into the future. Oh, and that's he, very interesting. He, he can take risks one at a time and so on, you know. He, he is a man who dared to take risks. I gained yeah. one step, you know, then I go for the next step. I can wait. Kasia Baromia, if that is the case, what do you think will be the reaction? I ask you specifically because you are a former Yellow Shirts activist and you were involved in... Uh, you were very vocal against Taksim when he uh, did win the election. You were trying to unseat his party in 2008. You even supported a siege of the airport. It was a very tumultuous time during Thai politics. Will Thailand mm -hmm. let Taksim return? I think the, the, I think the equation of Thai political arena has changed now. Before, it was competition among the conservative factions Mm. Uh, in, in the Thai politics. But now it is between the conservative elements of the Thai politics, the establishment, versus the progressive forces of the masses of the Thai people led by the Move Forward Party. So it's between the elite and the mass. It's no longer the struggle and the infighting inside the military, uh, inside the conservative establishment, which Thaksin was one of the establishment from the very beginning. But he wanted to monopolize the establishment. That's why he was opposed and finally kicked out. But now he had come back to, I think, shake hand with him because of the more formidable challenges forthcoming from the progressive forces of Thailand. I mean, Panchada, it was interesting, wasn't it? When uh, Taksin arrived, he made a great show of kneeling before the portrait of the king. This is a king who strips Taksin of his royal honours just a few years ago because he was so uh, horrified by the charges of corruption against him. I mean, again, it just seems to be a constant ebb of flow of people in the uh, Thai establishment, in Thai politics. Is Taksin now very pro-monarchy? Well, uh, if you look at how he acts, you know, um, and how he planned, we can see, um, you know, now he's turned to be like pro uh, uh, conservative and pro monarchy. Not only this event when he, uh, you know, get back into Thailand. If you look at the news all the time in the past couple of years, his family, you know, have uh, visiting the palace and then you know give uh, away meet the king. It's on the news sometimes, and we can see that 
And also, you know, um, before before the day he's arrived, his uh, friends, um, they've been chit chat the the uh, the other guy, the the former uh, politicians under uh, Thai Rak Thai party. He came to the airport and then set up everything, uh, set up all the picture and set up everything to to make sure that when he came out, uh, get out from the airport, he can pay respect to the king's picture. So then that's why a lot of Thai people they are criticized, you know, that. Um, Taksin maybe she changed his ideology and he turned to be pro monarchy and you know uh, maybe turned to be a part of the conservative side. And now you know um, as uh, Kun Kasit said, we are having the uh, the, uh, the political conflict not uh, the same pattern anymore, not the red shirt and the yellow shirt, but it's turned to be the conservative led by the military and also Kun Thai maybe included in it and also uh, the um, the the democratic side which is going to be the move forward party. Mm. Duncan, do you think we're going to see another colour shirt rise up? Because Thai people, they may be stymied at the ballot box, but they're certainly vocal when they don't get their voices heard at the ballot box. Do you think... I mean, I'm quite surprised that we haven't seen more protests so far from all the people who voted for Move Forward. It seems to be quite quiet on that front. Yes, because the new colour is orange, and orange is a, is a blend of yellow and red, and that's the colour mm. of the Move Forward. Party and its its precursor, the Future Forward Party. Now we did have large scale protests, mostly led by students and younger people, in the second half of 2020, but which were extremely extensive. People tend to focus on a small number of them in Bangkok, but in fact there were hundreds of them all over the country. So we saw that protests could be mobilised quite rapidly by groups of people who were not necessarily aligned with either the old yellow or red factions. But that was three years ago. Many of the leaders of that movement are no longer in a position to, to do what they did before. They faced legal charges. They've been harassed. Uh, they've found it very, very difficult to function in the years that followed. So it's difficult to see exactly where a large mass of people would come from to be mobilized. But we've also got to say that if we look at previous protests, uh, including the PDRC protests in 2013-14 against the Yinglai government, these protests can come out of nowhere. Uh, it can seem that there really aren't very many people who are furious enough to take to the streets, and then they pop up. So I think it's it's very difficult to predict anything about Thai politics, but it's particularly difficult to predict whether there is the potential and capacity for a new mobilization of street politics, because those phenomena can happen very suddenly. It can only take a matter of days or weeks for a new movement to start to emerge. And typically, when it does emerge, it doesn't take the exact same form as its immediate precursors. So we could be in for something new, uh, but it's unlikely to be exactly what we've seen before. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, Cassit Peromia, we, we just, I should note, we did invite uh, a member of the Move Forward Party to come on to this discussion, but we didn't hear a response which we felt was quite unusual because they have come on and they've spoken before at length. I wonder why they are stepping back from the spotlight. What role are they going to take now? And what are their followers going to do next? I think they are taking stock of the situation. You know, looking at the formation of the new cabinet, who are the ministers and so on. But overall, there are seeds of discontentment going on in the Thai society. It awaits only a few spark of something to happen. Then there will be more rallies on the street and so on. And second is that the former leader of the Move Forward Party, uh, in particular, Kun Thanathorn, will he take the lead in the extra parliamentary activities, that is the street ladies or not. He has been on and off, you know, on the street, behind the scene, in front of the scene. Will, will he take the mantle of the leadership, you know, to, I think, push forward the democratization process of, of Thailand, the changes of the, uh, to have a new constitution and so on. All of this, I think, Things are happening very fast, but I think one has to be a bit patient to see what, what will happen. But I think uh, there's uh, the general feeling that uh, there will be some more protests who will lead and all of this and so on, because there are a, a lot of things that the people do not like. You know, the denial of the 14 million votes, 
you know, the treatment, the special treatment uh, to Thaksin and so on, as if that he is like, a, you know, a, a lord or something like this. He is not an ordinary uh, prisoner and all of this and so on. And all the excuses that have come, I think it irks people. And mm -hmm. I think it makes people feel that all of these politicians and bureaucrats uh, may, uh, looking at the people that they are na naive in the Thai saying that we, we are not buffaloes. But I think so far the Thai people have been treated like buffaloes. And that is the seed of discontentment that will crop up inevitably. You know, maybe not at this moment, but uh, I think it will come up uh, as the uh, day uh, to, for the days to come. Panchada, as uh, as Kasia Paramya says, things happening fast at the moment, but change is certainly slow to come to Thailand. When do you think the people's vote will be honoured? When will democracy rule? Yeah, before I answer this, can I add a little more that uh, actually move forward is not quiet. If you look at their, you know, social media, Thanathorn active very much in a couple of days. And then most of the leader of the move forward, they active a lot on the TikTok and then Instagram and on, and on their Facebook and Twitter. So then they are not quiet for so what's going on. But I think you call them when they were busy for the voting session. So I don't think that move forward, it's quiet about all this kind of thing happened and they plan ahead. I think they already plan what's going to do. For Thailand uh, to have a real democracy, I think um, the next election is really important. I think move forward, have a high you know, potential to win the landslide because people are upsetting to what's going on among the Thai and you know, what's, the, what's going on for the politics at this time. Most people will support more with the move forward in the next election. So, And I have a chance to discuss this with uh, from my research, we have a lot of uh, move forward MP. They always said the same thing that wait for the next time they will fight okay. again. Duncan, just in the minute we've got left, do you think the next election in Thailand will be honoured? Well, I'd certainly like to think so. Right? It's going to get more and more difficult. But of course, move forward has a number of problems, one of which they could, is that they could even be dissolved and have to reinvent themselves. And you know, the whole political landscape will have changed. So, of course, if there was an election right now, it feels like move forward would win a landslide. But it's really difficult to predict how things could unfold uh, over the next year or so. We could be in a, in a very, very different situation before too long because it's so dynamic at the moment. It certainly is. We can never say that Thai politics is boring. Many thanks to all our guests today for joining us. Panchada Sirewanabud, Duncan Macargo and Kasit Piromya. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website. That's aljazeera.com. For further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on X, formerly known as Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Laura Kyle, and the whole team here, it's bye for now.